today, we want to continue with our teaching. And we'll pray for the word. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. Your word is quick and powerful. Your word is sharper than any two-edged sword. Your word is spirit and it is life. And we ask now, Lord, please speak your word of life to us. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Beloved brothers and sisters, we want to treat the topic, greater victory, victory by faith. Greater victory, victory by faith. Our text for this year has been 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. By that text, we have established that greater victory comes from no other than our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Glory be to God and his Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. So, today we want to focus on victory by faith, the aspect of victory by faith. Just to give a background for those who may just be joining us, we have covered a number of aspects of greater victory. We've covered victory over sickness and diseases. We have covered victory uh, for, uh, uh, for life. Victory uh, over all evil. We have covered many areas. And we covered victory over death and victory over poverty, which means victory for eternal life and victory, uh, victory for life, victory for eternal life, and victory for prosperity. We made the distinction between victory over and victory for. Victory over, we always say, for over something that is negative or evil. And victory for, for something that is positive. Praise the name of the Lord. So having covered those dimensions of victory, we came to the point of a doing. And that's where we are now. And now we're talking about greater victory that comes by. First John chapter 5, verse 4. It says, for whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. So you can easily say from this scripture that the victory that comes from God is obtained by what? By faith. Hallelujah. So God has given us victory because we are born of God. If you're born of God, God has given you victory. So the first point to make here is that victory, greater victory, three. has overcome. You have overcome the world. The victory. You have been given the victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Just like the first scripture states. Now, how do we obtain that victory? By faith. By faith. For whatever overcome the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. So we have been given victory, we have been made an overcomer, and that to enjoy it, it is by faith. Praise the name of the Lord. So very quickly, we'll look at um, a few uh, lines in this uh, series of today, 
We'll look at a few outlines. So we'll start by looking at what is faith. This is common, isn't it? And then um, we'll look at the degrees of faith, the degrees of faith. Then if time permits us, we will continue with the text. As part of what is faith, we will still mention the foundation of faith, which already the text that we read gives a hint on that. So let's start. What is faith? What is faith? Before we go to the scripture that defines uh, this faith, which I believe many of us know, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. I want to give us some definitions from a man that God raised up and he taught faith. I have personally been so blessed reading and listening to the audio message of his book. That is E.W. Kenyon. E.W. Kenyon. He passed away uh, in 1948. Yet the messages that he taught then are still blessing lives all over the world today, including my own life. So he wrote a book titled The Two Kinds of Faith. The Two Kinds of Faith. We will come to that later. And in that book, he gave a simple understanding of faith consistent with the scripture. He says, faith is the result of the word of God living in us. That is the word, live, practice, until it becomes part of ourselves. Of course, you know, from Colossians chapter 3, verse 16, the Bible says, let the word of Christ dwell in you, read. In Romans chapter 10, verse 17, the Bible says, So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So this man of God also, consistent with that scripture, says, Faith comes by hearing the word of God, understanding it, and by it becoming a part of us. This Part of us is very important because many people talk faith. Many people talk faith as assumption. Many people talk faith by quoting the Bible from their memory. That is not faith. Faith is about living in the reality of the word of God. And God and his word are one. So faith is living in the reality of God. Or God's reality. It is being immersed. Totally. In your life. In God. And knowing that everything God says. And. God will do whatever he has said. Remember Jesus said in Matthew chapter 4. During the temptation of Jesus. Remember what he said in verse 4. But he answered and said, it is written. Man shall not live by bread alone, but, but by every word that proceeds. From the mouth of God. This is what faith is. So let me put it in my own words. Simply. 
faith is living in the reality of the word of God. That is God's reality. Living in the reality of the word of God. That is God's reality. That is living in God's reality. You live and God becomes real to you. God is not a theory. God is not assumption. God is not um, someone sitting in a far starry heaven that you cannot relate with. But God is real. The word of God is real to you. Living in the reality of the word of God. Hallelujah. Let's look into the scripture a bit deeper. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 11. That I will look at a few verses for today. Hebrews chapter 11 from verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. The evidence, the reality of things. You have not seen, but you know that God says it is yours. Verse 2. For by it, the elders obtained a good testimony. The King James Version said a good report. Verse 3. By faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. By faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gift and through it, he being dead still speaks. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 5, by faith, Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death and was not found because God had taken him. For before he was taken, he had this testimony that he pleased God. What did you hear there? Verse 2, the world, the entire world, were framed by the word of God. How? By faith. Verse 4, Abel offered acceptable sacrifice to God, and even though he was dead, yet he was still speaking. How? By faith. In verse 5, what did you see there? Enoch was translated. He didn't die. He was translated from this physical world to be with God. How did that happen? By faith. And that's why we are talking about greater victory that comes by faith. It comes by faith. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's continue and see a bit more. Verse 6. But without faith, impossible to please God. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and what? A rewarder of those who diligently seek him. This is the key. By faith we receive the reward of the blessing that God has for us. It is all by faith. So greater victory that we have discussed, we have talked about, we have showed. Oh, we have victory over death. Hallelujah. We have victory over poverty. Hallelujah. We have victory over sickness and diseases. How? By faith. Glory be to God. I believe somebody is excited that we have come to this point. This is the point. 
of doing. Hallelujah. This is the point of living. Let's continue verse 7. And we'll stop at 11. So we can uh, bring in a few more things. It's all by faith. Look at verse 7. By faith, Noah, being divinely warned, with godly fear, move to prepare the act for the saving of his household, by which he condemned the world and became of righteousness, which is according to faith. Hallelujah. By faith. He became head of righteousness. Verse 8. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would receive as an inheritance. And he went out not knowing where he was going. Yet he moved by faith. Verse 9. By faith, he dwelt in the land of promise. As in a foreign country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he waited for the city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. 11. Oh, I love this. By faith, Sarah herself also received strength to conceive seed. And she bore a child when she was past the age at 90 years. She received strength. Wow. 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 Whatever God has done before, for any human being that you need in your life, which is part of the blessing package of God, you can have it only if you can believe. Only if you can apply your faith by faith. Sarah herself also received strength to conceive seed and she bore a child when she was past the age because she judged him faithful who had promised. So back to our text. Let's touch very quickly on the foundation of faith. The foundation of faith is to be born of God. If you are not born of God, born again, born by the Spirit of God, what we're talking about here will be theory to you. So the scripture in 1 John chapter 5, verse 4 says, For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. So when we're talking about faith, we are talking about faith in God and his word. We are talking about believing God and acting upon his word. Praise the name of the Lord. We will come to that. So again, I repeat, that's why Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. He said, for I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father. No man comes to God except by me. People may have faith in other things. Yes, indeed, man uh, does exercise faith. Faith we're talking about here, the faith of enjoyment that is given to mankind, as you have heard me enumerate from this Hebrews chapter 11, from verse 1 to 11. There are still many more in this Hebrews chapter 11 for us to talk about. 
to enjoy this blessing is through Jesus Christ. That is the foundation of faith. It is by coming to God through Jesus Christ, being born of God, born of the Spirit of God. So 1 John 5, 4 says, For whatever is born of God overcomes the and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. So this is what we are in to look at, to enjoy this life, the eternal life that God has given us through Jesus Christ, to enjoy this victory, this greater victory in all areas and dimension of life that God has given to us. So this is the foundation of faith that we are talking about. For the word of God to work in your life, in my life, in our life, you have to come to him through Jesus Christ, the one who himself is the word. Hallelujah. The Bible, chapter one. And the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was with God from the beginning. All things were made by him. There is nothing that was made that was made without him. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in darkness, and darkness comprehends it not. Glory be to God. Thank you, Lord. So, if you have not given your life to Jesus, so you come to this point where you can enjoy this blessing, I want you right now to begin to talk to God. Begin to surrender your life to Jesus. At the end, I will pray with you. Because you have to be born of God to enjoy the provision of blessing by faith. One of the reasons why you have to come to Jesus is because this blessing is in the new covenant. It is packaged under the covenant of the blood of Jesus, sealed by his name, operated by his Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God. Hallelujah. So that's why you have to come to Jesus and be born of God to enjoy this victory by faith. We want to talk very quickly at the degree and level of faith. The degree and level of faith. Because there are measures of faith, but you can grow in faith. Praise the name of the Lord. We don't pray for faith. As I said, we grow in faith. Because we already receive faith by the Spirit of God when we give our life to God through Jesus Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. So, if you remember in First Corinthians chapter 12, one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit is the gift of faith. Praise the name of the Lord. So it is by the practice, our willingness to walk and cooperate with the Holy Spirit, to practice what the Word of God says, that will enable us to grow in faith, to that measure of faith that has been given to us. Glory be to God. So again, is what makes the difference. There is nobody special. It is the level of faith that you are willing to exercise. Have you received the Spirit of God? Anointing is by the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is one. There is nobody who has received a different Holy Spirit. He is one Holy Spirit. Praise the name of the Lord. That we all have received. The difference comes by Faith. Are you ready 
to exercise faith to receive all the blessings that God has. So quickly, we want to start looking at little faith, degree and level of faith. Let's start by looking at little faith, little faith. We can see this in the book of Matthew. A whole lot was said about little faith in Matthew. But let's just look at Matthew 8. You remember this is the story of the centurion who came to Jesus. So Matthew chapter 8, here we jump to, let's look at verse 10, first of all, Matthew chapter 8, verse 10, Matthew chapter 8, verse 10, that's the story of the centurion. He said, when Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to those who followed, as shortly I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. Forgive me, I'm mixed. I'm turning it around. This is great faith. This is great faith, please. We'll come to great faith. Let's go to 26 and see. Little, little faith. Um, Matthew 8, 26. Okay. This was now the case of uh, his disciples. His disciples we can start from verse 23. He said, now when he got into a boat, his disciples followed him. And suddenly a great tempest arose on the sea. So the boat was covered with the waves, but he was asleep. Then his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us. We are perishing. Verse 26, but he said to them, why are you fearful? Oh, you of little faith, little faith. So little faith is no faith at all. In fact, several scriptures where you see little faith, there was no faith at all. Little faith here in the scripture means doubt. Doubt. It means one who is doubtful and one who is fearful. As you've seen there in verse 26, he said, why are you fearful? So little faith is no faith. When you hear little faith, it means it is no faith at all. Let's corroborate that with Matthew chapter 6, verse 30. Jesus was the one speaking here. He says, now, if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O oh, you of little faith? O oh, you of little faith. They say Matthew 14, verse 31. Matthew 14, 31. Talking about little faith. So when you say, I, you have little faith. Little faith is no faith at all. So this was the story of Peter. Remember when Jesus was walking on water, Peter said, Lord, command me to come. And Jesus said to him, come. Peter stepped out and he was on the water. Then so suddenly he began to sink. And Jesus caught him and said, Oh, you of little faith. We read verse 31. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? So little faith is no little faith is doubt and fear. Let's look at faith as grain of mustard seed. Some people may call this small faith, but I haven't seen that in my own scripture. My scripture says it was faith as a grain of mustard seed. Yeah, as a grain of mustard seed. So Matthew chapter 17, verse 20. Matthew 17, verse 20. You see that? He says, so Jesus said to them, because of your own belief, for assuredly I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there. And it will move and nothing will be impossible for you. Now, this is the point to, 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 to learn here. That even the smallest of faith can move mountains. Hallelujah. So when you move from the place of little faith, which means no faith. As I've said, little faith means no faith. You move from the place of fear and doubt to the place of faith. Whatever the degree of faith you have, 
You can apply it. That's what this scripture is teaching us. And you can move mountains. So whatever that mountain is, if you have the foundation of faith, as I have just taught you, because the foundation of faith is for you to be born of God. And to be born of God, you have to give your life to Jesus Christ. The one who came down from heaven and laid down his life, suffered on the cross on, at Calvary for you and me. He shed his blood. He died and rose from the dead, ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of God. He has all power, all authority, all dominion over all creations of God in heaven and on earth. And in his name, all oh, faith, but everything responds to the name of Jesus. And that is the word of faith that we speak, that has been given to us. Glory be to God. So, when you have come to the foundation of faith, you have become part of the covenant of the blood of Jesus. You already have faith because the Spirit of God is in you. You have potential to move mountains. That's what this scripture is telling. That even if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, not fear, not doubt. That starting point of faith, you can move mountains. Glory be to God. So let's move to great faith, which I already touched on. Uh, Matthew chapter 8, verse 10. I touched on Matthew chapter 8, verse 10. That is the case of the centurion. Now let's look at Matthew chapter 15, verse 28. Matthew 15. 28. All these were taught by Jesus Christ. Glory be to God. Matthew 15, 28. Ah. Then Jesus answered and said to her, O oh woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. You remember this story? This was the woman who came to Jesus and told him, Jesus, please come and heal my daughter. But Jesus ignored her completely. Even when the woman said, have mercy on me, oh Lord, son of David, my daughter is severely uh, demon possessed. Come and deliver her. Jesus ignored her. But when he said, but he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she cries out after us. But the woman persevered. Jesus said, I was not sent except to the lordship of the house of Israel. But the woman said, Lord, help me. Jesus said, it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. And the woman said, ah, Lord, I know, but even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Hey, <laughs> When Jesus heard that, that's where that verse 28 came from. Then Jesus answered and said to her, O oh, woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. Great faith. Let's also see Acts chapter 6, verse 58. Acts 6, 58. This is talking about full faith, full faith. And if you're a Bible student, you already know who that describes. 
That is the description of Stephen. Stephen, a man full of faith, full faith. Acts chapter 6. Let's look at verse 5. Acts chapter 6, verse 5. And the saying pleased the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. If you jump to verse 6, it says, Whom they set before the apostles, and when they had prayed, they laid hands on them. Jump to verse 8. And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and signs among the people. Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders. Hallelujah. Meanwhile, look at that verse 5 uh, again. And the attitude, and they choose Stephen, a man full of faith and the Holy Spirit, and Philip, Prochorus, Nic Nicanor, Timon, Parmena, and Nicholas, a proselyte from Antioch. But Stephen was the one full of faith and the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says in that verse 8 that he did great wonders and signs among the people. Greater victory will accompany you with mighty signs and wonders by faith in Jesus Christ, in the word of God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Almighty God. So, we've seen the examples. We've seen the levels of faith. If you have come to Christ, you have a measure of faith. It's time to apply that faith. And that's the journey we want to take. And so, my next teaching session, we will cover the three parts of faith, and then we will start the practical work of faith, looking at how we acquire faith and how we exercise faith. This is where we want to draw the curtain, and I want to pray. Glory be to God. We want to pray. You have heard what the people of old obtained by faith, according to Hebrews chapter 11. You read from verse 3 all the way to verse 11 that I read. Oh, different kinds of things they obtained by faith. This are the people of old. They didn't even have, many of them did not even have the old covenant. Talk less of the new covenant. God revealed himself to them in their own dispensation. You remember so much so that in Exodus chapter 6, when God was calling Moses, when God was calling Moses, he said to Moses, I appear to your father, Abraham. Let me go there. So you will see. He said, then the Lord said to Moses, now you shall see what I will do to them. For with a strong hand, he will let them go. And with a strong hand, he will drive them out of his land. Get it. He said, and God spoke to Moses and said to him, I am the Lord. I appeared to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob as God Almighty. But by my name, Lord, I was not known to them. Can you see how limited the, uh, the revelation of God to them? They only knew God as God Almighty. They didn't know God as the Lord. The one who doesn't take permission from anybody to do what he wants to do. So God introduced another level of revelation, dimension of revelation to Moses. 
which led them into the old covenant. We have come to a totally new dimension of revelation of God through Jesus Christ, the, the dimension of sonship and daughterhood, if you may put it that way. We are sons and daughters of God. We have been made in the image of the Son of God. That's who we are. Glory be to God. We want to pray. What are you asking God for? You have the right to receive it now by faith in the name of Jesus. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Romans chapter 10 verse 17. And the Bible says, if we ask, Anything in the name of Jesus, God will give it to us. Jesus said, He will do it. I want to read Matthew chapter 10 again, verse 8, that I always read so we hear it and hear it again because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. This was Jesus speaking to his disciples, whom we are, and more than disciples, we are his children. You are a son and a daughter of God. I am a son and a daughter of God. Verse 8. He said, heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. I want to start with those who are giving their life to Jesus. If you're hearing me, whether on Zoom or on Facebook or anywhere, you want to give your life to Jesus. Go right now and tell him, almighty God. I repent of my sin. Forgive me my sin. I confess with my mouth that Jesus is the Son of God who came down and died for my sin. He rose from the dead and ascended to heaven and he lives forever. He is my Lord and my Savior. I accept him, Jesus, into my life. Father God, now, Pour your spirit upon me. Make me indeed your son, your daughter, your child. And from today, almighty God, help me to fulfill all your will and your purpose for my life. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. If you have prayed that prayer, now join as we ask. Open your mouth and ask God for whatever you desire of him according to his will by faith. Go ahead and ask him. Ask him according to his will by faith. If you're sick, you are hereby healed according to his will. For the will of God is contained in the Bible, in the scripture. It's revealed here. And the Bible states, first, uh, 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 Peter chapter 2 verse 24 by his stripes you were healed his word says you were healed therefore I declare you healed in the name of Jesus are you oppressed by the devil you have been seeing terrible dreams nightmares all manner and forms of oppression in the name of Jesus I cast out that devil I Terminate the operation of that devil in your life. I command that migraine to go. I command that sickness and disease that the devil has placed in your body to go. Whatever is not of God in your life, open your own mouth now and say, go from my life. In the name of Jesus. Matthew chapter 8, that authority has been given to us. That whatever we ask to go, must go. And whatever we ask to come, must come. In the name of Jesus. Not in your name, not in my name, not by your power, not by my power, but in the name of Jesus. And so, whatever is not of God in your life, whatever is not of God in my life, whatever relationship God 
has not permitted in your life that has been attached to you and creating problems in your life. I command it to be terminated right now. It must go. Go in the name of Jesus. Every tree God has not planted in your life and in my life and in our families, I terminate them now. You join me and say that tree is hereby terminated. Evil tree is terminated in my life and in my family. In the name of Jesus. Now open your mouth and ask him big things. Ask him for breakthroughs. Ask him for that original blessing of Abraham to be poured upon you and that doors should open for you, doors of favor. Ask him to give you the strength to do hard work. You remember, as we will come to see, you have to work hard. Faith is not talk. Faith is not talk. Faith is action. Faith is doing. Part of what we are doing now is the doing. Amen. Faith is action. You have to study the word of God to know the promises of God that are meant for you. And you have to live, practice it till it becomes part and parcel of your life. I'm already jumping ahead of myself beginning to talk what we're going to discuss next week, but we need it. So go ahead and ask God. Whatever you don't want, you say that thing must end. Whatever you desire, call it forth to come. Call it forth to come. Call it forth. Back it up with the word of God. Call it forth to come in the name of Jesus. This is our year of greater victory. You and I will enjoy greater victory in all dimensions of life and existence. Spiritually, we shall enjoy greater victory in this year 2021. Physically, we shall enjoy victory. Materially, we shall enjoy greater victory. Societally, socially, mentally, emotionally, in all aspects, we shall enjoy greater victory. So I declare over you right now, receive that greater victory, receive that uh, uh, prayer, answer to that prayer that you have asked the Lord to do for you. You and your household be blessed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Join me as we pray for the nations of the earth that the kingdom of God will be established all over the world. His will will be done. In Revelation chapter 1, the Bible says it clearly that Jesus Christ is the ruler over the king of the earth. Pray with me and say, Father God, we join our voices and our faith together and we pray, oh God, let your kingdom be established today. All over the world, every nation of the earth, let the will of God be done today in the name of Jesus. Let the kings of the earth be subject to their ruler, Jesus Christ, and do the will of God. That every plan of God and purpose of God, every will of God, at this time and this point, all over the world will be fulfilled. Lord, thank you. For we know you have heard us and you have answered us. And so we ask for a mighty revival, mighty move of the Holy Spirit over the earth. Let the righteousness of God heal the entire earth. Let souls be drawn to God, their creator, and to Jesus, the Savior of all mankind. Thank you, our Father and our God. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. God bless you, brothers and sisters. Thank you so much for joining.